Welcome, my friends, to the Sage Equate Radio Hour, your home for free and critical thinking, and I'm your host, Mike Williams. Tonight, Kara St. Louis returns to the show. Kara is an author and an alternative researcher. She has written several books, including her recently released second edition of Dangerous Imagination, Silent Assimilation, which contains the newest science and facts on social engineering, chemtrailing, the false history, and much more. The book is available at Amazon.com. The discussion with Kara was wide-ranging as we discussed trolls, egos, controlled opposition, and the challenge of getting humanity to awaken to the matrix. And so without further ado, here's the conversation with Kara. Kara, welcome back to the show. It has been a while. I guess it's been about a year or so. I know you've been busy. I've been busy. But the good news is that because of the 12 months that's transpired, we have a lot to talk about. Yeah, we sure do. <laughs> and a lot of stuff to uh, to catch up on. So I know that you've written a couple of new books. One is 600 Pages, Part 2 of uh, Dangerous Imagination. Yeah. Yeah. That just came out a week ago. Okay. Second edition. Yeah. And we'll talk about that and mm -hmm. uh, a lot of other stuff. But one of the things I wanted to maybe to kick off with, it's kind of on this thread that I started when I had three Facebook friends come on the show and talk to me. And they are not three brand names in the alternative research community or the truth community. They're just three regular yeah. people. They're trying to pursue the truth and looking into the truth. But one of the problems that hangs over anybody who does the work that you do, that I do, or that any of our listeners are looking into is the matrix, their jobs, the society and the culture itself. They will come down like a ton of bricks on people. Mm -hmm. And as I mentioned before, we, we got connected here. They try to keep our heads in a vice so that we don't say anything, that we, we tow the mainstream line and we do not talk about or put out to our audience anything that has to do with an alternative view of something. Mm -hmm. This is not critical thinking. This is not free thinking. This is robotic functioning in society. And uh, so if you're not a robot, then you're going to most likely at some point catch some heat or for some people run into big problems like maybe lose their jobs as an example. So mm -hmm. I know you had a, um, a recent experience that uh, I was wondering if you wanted to talk about. I do. I do. Because, in fact, I want to, as you know, Mike, I'm pretty much an open book all the time. And um, shutting me up tends to be the problem, not getting me started. So, uh, first of all, I want to say to Michael that um, it's always <laughs> it's always such an amazing thing to come back to this show because Mike's the first person in the United States who ever wanted to interview me about anything years ago. And so um, every time I'm on, I'm reminded of how hard it is to get your voice heard in the USA. It's butt hard, people. It really is. Um, I had to leave the country and kind of come back in under the door. And it was then that Mike, uh, Mike was the first person to interview me. So whenever I come to Mike, it's almost like I'm like coming home in a way, going back to Mike and starting at the very seed of how things started to get going for me. Um, and I do remember you talking. I remember you asking for people on Facebook to come and speak to you. I remember seeing that on your page, you know, not the normal, just just not the usual folks, the, just some normal people come and talk to me. Let's do something different, which I think is fantastic because right now we're all trying, the last year or so, we've all been trying to figure out how we associate with each other, how we're bringing this material. It's very much been on all our minds and how to get our message out to people in, in, um, in this environment, in this environment that's gotten really crappy since Max Spears died. And, um, also just because, as you said, the matrix is a real vice grip. And I've learned in the last year or so that it's actually coming at me from several sides. But the one thing, the thing Mike's talking about is, um, I, uh, I've been teaching. I'm a Steiner teacher, a Waldorf teacher. You guys know that. I never make any bones about that, although I've never identified the school I teach at in London. Um, but the fact of the matter is I've been there for three years and I've never made a secret of what I do on the, uh, my activism, but I've also never pushed it. It doesn't belong at school. It doesn't belong. It has, the children have nothing to do with what I do on the outside. However, my, uh, superiors, such as they were up until recently, 
were aware of it. Some of them had re- had read the chapter on education, you know, that sort of thing. One of them had seen a video. It wasn't a secret because, in fact, nothing I do can't stand the light of day as far as I'm concerned. However, um, we did get a new I got a new headmaster, if you want to call her that. In September, when I was away taking care of one of my children, and um, she asked me if I had I had taken as much money in advance of my salary as I could because I needed money to get through the term. And she said, is there any other way that we can help you? And I said, well, the thing is, I've got some royalties and I've got, I can do a, a fundraiser and things like that. So maybe there are some other things I can do for myself to get through this, which led her to start searching through the Internet for my books. Okay. And she got a hold of all my stuff, which is fine, except it's one thing to have a differing opinion. But, you know, here's a teacher. She, they've got a teacher who travels the world lecturing on education and social engineering and things like that. And it's not something to be ashamed of by any stretch. Um, my books are really good reading and they're well researched and they're accurate and all of those things. But the thing that seemed to make her the craziest was when she came across my work on the alternative chronology the false history, you see. Um, and that I found as I went through the year, uh, that is actually the topic that got me the most cognitive dissonance from everybody. Okay. And by the way, she came from Berlin and frankly, it's illegal to, to question history in Germany, which we know some of us know anyway, you know that, don't you, Mike? I do know. Yep. So the fact that I was coming up with this alternative history really got me and landed me in Dutch with my new boss. She made, she did not fire me per se, but she made it absolutely really, really difficult for me to be there such that I am not going to continue to teach after the, after mid July. I'm done. And as far as I'm concerned, my activism did cost me my teaching job, which it never should have. But this happens to a lot of us. It happens. And, and interestingly enough, I had talked to a couple of people about this along the way. And um, this potential that it could happen that someday I might be faced with this situation and this decision. And the reality is, was always going to be that I would walk away from my teaching because the other stuff is too damned important. And it's it's really almost at critical mass right now. So, yeah. So guess what, gang? I uh, I'm one of the casualties now. I've lost my job. Thanks to uh, thanks to the things that I do Um you know, uh, my activism, basically, from chemtrails all the way through to uh, rewriting Dangerous Imagination, but in particular, the false chronology work that I did. So I'm not the only one by any stretch, and now I'm going to continue on with my writing and my lecturing and my, um, you know, I'm doing workshops on uh I'm actually doing workshops now on the sovereign imagination. I do them online right now. I'd like to do them in person, but um, this is another thing we can talk about in terms of how people actually are able to access your information. Now, how are they able to access you? Um, not so much in person anymore. You know, I can, I can uh, conduct a workshop on uh, regaining control of your thoughts globally in a Zoom chat room. Yep. Or I can try to do it, which I'm going to try to do in California um, in August. And um, I'd rather, much rather have an audience. I'd much rather have people. And then in September, I'm going to do it in Holland, I think. But, um, yeah, so thank you, Mike, for the opportunity. And so, and so, folks, there is always a GoFundMe for me going on right now to um, help shore up the uh, royalties and, and lecture fees and things like that. Um, and I will make sure Mike has the has the link. So this really pisses me off because yeah, <laughs> because these same folks are walking around thinking that they're clear thinkers, they're critical thinkers, they're free thinkers, yeah. and you're not allowed to investigate things. You're not allowed to research things. You're not allowed to have an alternative view to things. It's just absolutely amazing to me, and it mm-hmm. is. Uh, it just really illustrates. What a robotic, mind-controlled, artificially intelligenced society that we live in. Right, right. Absolutely unbelievable. Because when you think about it, you're writing your material, you're doing your thing. Who are you harming? Right. Nobody. Right. You, the, the book is not mandatory reading. Anybody who wants to read your book has to plop down a couple of bucks. Mm-hmm. Buy the book. Right? Yeah, that's Anybody it. Anybody who wants to listen to one of your lectures or one of your interviews has to go to YouTube and find you and click the right. play button. 
If you don't want to listen to the stuff and you don't want to read that stuff because you don't like it, you don't believe it, whatever it may be, you don't buy the book and you don't click the play button. It's very exactly, simple. Exactly. Exactly. But you know, it's, it's really, it's really getting to the point where it's very frustrating. And I know they want, they want to frustrate us. You know, mm-hmm. It's the same thing with YouTube where they are pulling all of the, um, the advertising. So folks that have YouTube channels and they monetize their channels to make a couple of bucks. They can't do that anymore. In fact, right. you know, I'm a musician. Right. And my publisher sent me a letter about a month ago and said that they had received a correspondence from YouTube and said that because of YouTube's advertising policies. Yeah. They wrote to my music publisher. Oh my God. To tell them that certain videos on my channel were not going to be monetized. Now, I don't monetize, so I was a little confused by this. Yeah. But I think what they were saying was that I won't be able to collect royalties from my own songs that are in my YouTube clips. I'm waiting to see what happens because they're my songs, okay? Right, right. There are no yeah. advertisers involved. But you know what I'll do? I'll put a copy of the letter. Mm-hmm. The do it. So people can yeah. see it where – now, it's not TuneCore's fault. It's not their problem. It's not their issue. They were contacted by YouTube. They in turn contacted me, the artist, to let me know. So this is the kind of thing that's going on now. They're they're really Mm -hmm. trying to pull out all the stops Mm -hmm. to shut down any kind of alternative research. Right. Any type of free thinking and critical thinking that diverges from the mainstream sheeple path. Well, I'll tell you what, Mike, the thing that, um, in the same vein, the thing that in the end made it impossible for me to continue to be associated with this school is that it, it's a freaking Waldorf school, Mike. I know. I was just going to say that. It's supposed to be the freest form of thinking in a school in the world, right? I, I absolutely know that I was surveilled, surveilled from like, I don't know, November of last year till right now. I promise you, I will hear about this interview because they're watching me like a hawk. Okay. That's my principal is watching me like a hawk because uh I would I would put something up on you on uh, Facebook or something and then I would get some note from her it's come to my attention that you know blah 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 and I go god damn it stop watching me and so one of the things also that I did was I said um not too long I guess January or something I said something along the lines of yeah my boss doesn't like I just wanted to see what would happen so I so I put my boss doesn't like my activism so she sacked me and I swear to God, the head of the board of trustees was on my e- was sent me an email within like 48 hours. Don't you ever do that again? Well, that told me what everything I needed to know, Mike. You know? Yeah. That told me everything I needed to know right there. It's out of control, Kara. It, it really is out is. of control. It's out of control. You can't, uh, you know, because folks, I've said this on a number of shows. There is no money in this. You know, no. I wish there were money. In it. And I know there's some, there's no money in it. And, you know, some Dude. people will come back and a lot of people will say this, you know, they will come yeah. down on people who are, who are in the truth movement or who are in the alternative research community and they're trying to make a couple of bucks at it. I don't find anything wrong with that because the people who are feeding us lies and propaganda and deception get paid really well. Oh yeah. Really well to push oh, yeah. their crap out to the masses. But if you're one of these people that, is pursuing the truth and trying to get alternative views and trying to get the free thinking and the critical thinking juices going, well, mm-hmm. you shouldn't be compensated for that at all. Right, the whole right. premise is, is absurd. Mm-hmm. It's an energy exchange, Mike. People don't understand that. People who are in holistic medicine understand this idea of the energy exchange. Well, the thing is, Carol, we still have to exist in this matrix. I, yeah. Nobody, to the best of my knowledge, has been able to completely step out of it yeah. And, you know, be in some parallel universe someplace right. where everything is honky dory. I mean, we still have to make a living. We still have to buy food. We still have to mm-hmm. pay rent, a mortgage or whatever, you know, whatever. <laughs> you got to keep the car from being repossessed. <laughs> <laughs> All that stuff. Right. So this whole concept where people are saying that because you're doing this work that you really shouldn't be compensated for it. Otherwise, you're I not know really every once in a while person. someone gets on my every once in a while Bullshit. someone will get on my Facebook and give me a bunch of shit because I'm selling books. Well, why isn't free? Why isn't it free? Well, because I, I'm a writer. This is how. Oh, my God. Why you know, free? you yeah. should just turn this loose, man. If this was coming from the heart, you'd be turning this loose for free. You know, OK. Anyway, but a couple of other things that have, uh, I can't remember the second one, but the first thing 
Yes, two things that have also I've discovered in the last year I've been going on, Michael, which has to do with keeping me down. And I know I'm not the only one. I don't feel like the victim. But um, one of the things I just realized is that there is a big old cadre of people trying to shade everything I do. Do you know what I mean when I say that? Yeah. I mean, when I put when I make an announcement of a, of a new book pending in two days, somebody inevitably will bomb the comment section with other people's work. OK, to distract, to nullify what I've just put up there. Right. And it isn't even just that. I mean, is this on Facebook? On Facebook. Yeah. Which is a, just kick them off and block them. Oh, yeah. I've got a, I, I'm just constantly blocking. And I and I warn people, don't do that, man. Don't do that. You're, you're out of here if you do that. But I've just recently learned that 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 there's actually a term for that. It's called shading. I guess you're in the shade of a tree. Like, I don't know, something along those lines. Somebody just did it. I just put out um, an update on my GoFundMe. Moggins was nice enough to put it on his page. And immediately somebody shaded it on his page, which is not a good idea because he's always on the rampage right now. So, so But there's that, okay? Yeah. There's that. So, um, And the other thing that's happening is I'm not going to say who because I think it's stupid to do so, but I've had to start blocking some fairly big names, Mike. And please don't think when I say this it's because I think I'm such hot shit because that's not what I mean. But I had to block some big names because they're stealing my stuff as soon as it comes out, Okay. Anything I put on Facebook, I, within 24 hours, will see it on their page as theirs. That goes on, and uh, people stealing and plagiarizing from other people. And uh, the thing, too, with a lot of folks that are in the truth movement and the alternative research community that I found, Kara, is that a lot of them, I don't want to see a lot of them. That's probably not fair. But there are those that are in the truth movement and the alternative research community that they're in it because they like the celebrity. Yes. Of it. They like yes. to be a personality. Now, if they may not have started that way, okay, mm. but, you know, as time has gone on, maybe they've grown into some kind of role where they like it. I mean, they like the celebrity aspect of it. They like to be a yep. known entity, a brand, if you will. They like it. And so it gets in the way. It yes. gets in the way because um, they start to get more motivated by maintaining that status than they do with actually digging in and doing the work. Absolutely. And I like to think that, I mean, I like to think that my research is authentic and good and reliable and just, I'm, you know, I'm one of those people who just, just sort of plows the furrow slowly, you know, and digs it 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 and then puts it out, you know. Um, and then I have to go market it. Most of us were right. If we're writers, that's not really our first, uh, impulse to get our mugs on the TV. You know what I mean? Right. Right. We really just kind of want to do the writing, but the reality is the marketing also has to be done or you're, or you're, you're writing for nobody but yourself. So, you know, this is, uh, the other thing I've had to learn since the first time I came on your show is how important this kind of stuff is. And, um, and also it's been, it's become extremely important to, um, make a list of people that you can go to and talk to that you can trust. Yep. And that's, that's, yeah. So some people, not so much, but you you make a, a small list of the people that you find trustworthy and you can just go have a conversation with and you know you're back. Like, OK, like, for example, um, one of the guys I talked to not too long ago because I was and I was I think I was the first, you know, fairly um, out there person to go talk to this guy. Do you know who C.W. Chanter is? Yes. I like the guy. I think he's you know, he's got so many. He's like nothing but rough edges. But he makes me laugh because he says <laughs> he says some shit that's just like yeah, oh I've watched a couple man, of his videos. Yeah. I wish I could say that stuff, you know. So I decided to go on. Uh, I don't remember when it was in the autumn or something, and I love talking to the guy. But then he lets you he lets his 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 um, viewers rape you in the comment section. He doesn't stop them at all. So I said, you know what? I can't. I'm out. I'm out of this. I, I'm not going to do it because you're you're not a gentleman. In this way, I like you. I like you have a lot of, of uh, potential, but you cannot let people rape your guests in the comment section. You can't. No, if you bring somebody onto your show. Now, let me I'll just talk about this a little bit, because I get asked a lot why it is that I don't allow comments on my YouTube channel. Right. It's because I don't want my guests and their work and their research and their presentation to fall to the circus mm -hmm. that goes on below. Mm -hmm. See, that's the thing. People don't understand that 
the powers that be, they have created this whole common mentality where people believe that it's their right yeah. to comment. It's their right to be allowed to say something, no matter how vile it is. Right. And that is absolutely not true. Okay. You only think it's true because you've been conditioned to believe that's the way it's supposed to be. Yeah. It's like, you know, if you watch a television show, you're watching an interview on, on television and whatnot. I mean, do you have the ability to sit there and watch the television show and then comment exactly. during the show or after the show? No. No. So the thing is, the reason why I don't do it is because I want to maintain the focus on my guest and on their research and on their presentation. It's just respectful. Right. Exactly. It's respectful. And if you're going to turn it over to, and I'm not picking on you know, the guy you no. just mentioned. I'm just Danger. saying, yeah. because many, many do this. Mm -hmm. but if you're going to turn it over to people that you don't know who you're turning it over to, you have lost control of your show mm -hmm. because you exactly. don't know who these people are that mm -hmm. are trying to plug in. Right. And they're mostly trolls, for God's sake. They're right. mostly, Absolutely. that's their job. Absolutely. That's their job is to destroy you. So why let them in? Actually, I still have the comment section on my channel right now, but I've been very clear. If you are not respectful, your ass is right, is out of there. I will not tolerate anything. So, Well, you know, Kara, I have, aside from my regular Sage Quay Radio Hour YouTube channel, I have a secondary channel. It's Guitar Talk with Mike. And what I'll do on that channel many times is I will do some reviews on guitars, but yeah. mostly it's dedicated to repairs and upgrades. I even have to monitor, I have to pre-approve the comments, even on videos where I'm teaching somebody how to wire in pickups on an electric guitar. Unbelievable. That is where we are at. We are in the gutter mm -hmm. with regard to how people misbehave. It's just, it's incredible yeah. to me where we have spiraled down to, where you've got people with vile, disgusting, repugnant language mm -hmm. commenting on a guitar video. I know. It's because it's the only way they can get to you, Mike, because you turned off the comments on your other stuff. So they're like, oh, there's uh, this is a way I can get Mike. It's 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 a uh, sideways and maybe not a lot of people will see it, but at least I can irritate him this way. You know, you know why Carrie doesn't bother me? Because I don't expect much more. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I don't approach it with a raised bar. Yeah. These yeah. Days because you know that that element is out there. Yeah. And you know that element is going to attack. They just will. That's what they do. They attack. Right. So right. If it comes in. What I do is I just, first of all, number one, I block you. And <laughs> number two, you get deleted. Yeah. But I guess the point I'm trying to make is that it's really commentary on on society, isn't it? I mean, it is. culture. It is. I mean, it's, the whole thing has been degraded to the point where you can't even have an intelligent conversation most of no, the time. No, Michael, I was just coming through Logan Airport from seeing my children for a couple of weeks. And from the airport, I sent a text to my husband saying, the dumbing down of America is complete. <laughs> I'm roaming around Logan Airport going, what is going on here? Because people are aggressive yeah. in a weird left hand, what the hell is that about way? And they're also wandering around like almost with drool coming out their mouths now. This has got to stop, Mike. We don't have it. I mean, we got to fix this. We got to fix this. This is. This is just not okay. So, th yeah, so I understand what you mean. But the reality is I've done and you've done a lot of really, really good work over the last year. We strive to do really good work. We want to get it out there. We're not doing this for fame. We're doing this for mostly for our kids, as you know. That's certainly what I always say is I'm doing this for my children and for all the children. And working 60, 70 hours a week, right? Yeah, right. Right. And talking to people and keeping clear communication open and traveling and lecturing and write, trying to write for God's sake and all of the things that we've been doing and a lot, probably, you know, a significant, I'm just going to say a significant portion of our energy is spent fighting off trolls and bullshit and, and, and the ways, the many, many ways that they try to bury us. Okay. And, and figuring out what the next way that they've tried to bury us is, you know, like last summer, last July, which is probably about the last time I talked to you. If not, I can't even remember what our last interview was, but that's just because so much has been going on. I'm sure it hasn't been that long. Anyway, last July, we, I was on my way to, I had just come out of a year of teaching and I, 
I was on my way to Australia. Do you remember? Yeah. I had uh, fundraised for almost a year to get to Australia. And even then, I had to fork over about a little bit of my own money and, and, and recoup it once I got there. And I had some amazing people um, as boots on the ground in Melbourne and boots on the ground in Byron and all of that kind of thing. And all it took was one troll, Mike, one well-placed troll in Australia to just torpedo all my work over there. You know, what it was happened? unbelievable. Well, this woman, um, I guess I could. Uh, anyway, there's this woman who's well known in Australia. She lives in Byron Bay. She's got about six aliases on Facebook that she actually has talked to each other and stuff so that they all have credibility. Right. She's well known in the um, chemtrail um, community there. And um, one of the things that I had done and not realized is that since the sun thief had come out, I've been talking to this woman on Facebook and she had been saying, oh, I'll help you get your book out in Australia. And I realized, you know, that you need some boots on the ground over here and blah, blah, blah. But there was always some reason that it never materialized. You know, her job was to keep me busy and never have it happen. Right. Then I came across this other guy, this guy who ran. Um, Ken Trails Melbourne, more than happy to help me out. You know, he's like, ah, oh, heck yeah, we'll get you down here. Whatever you need, we'll just rent a little church hall. And I went and we had like 80, 90, 100 people in the church hall. I sold some books. It was great. Did a recording. That's all you need. You don't need a big old marketing hoo-ha to do this stuff. You just need somebody who's willing to get the word out, get the people in one place for you, right? right. Unfortunately, I thanked him publicly on Facebook and it pissed her off. She was she was so outraged that I had not given her credit for me coming to Australia that she actually went bananas. And he told me, he goes, oh, my God, I can't believe you did that. She's not going to like that. And I was like, what do you mean she's not going to like that? You just worked your ass off to get me to Australia. Why am I not going to say thank you? You know, oh, she's not going to like that. We're in trouble now. And sure enough, she she was in New Zealand at the time, fortunately. But uh, she started, she just went on a campaign. She went on a campaign and Max Spears had died about the same time. So she started trying to link me with that. She started trying to link me with maltreating, mistreating Spears somehow. Because our paths had almost crossed, thanks to Miles Johnston, you know. Yeah. And so she made a big hoo-ha about that. She got she got thousands and thousands of people in an uproar about me. When I took I went up to Byron Bay to talk about the Fay instead of chemtrails. And as soon as I took the stage, literally at the same moment I took the stage, which means it was black magic, she started dissing me on the Starseed website, which is which is what the place was called, Starseed. Instantly I got on the stage to give my message. She started pouring all this negative stuff into the Starseed website. That went on forever and she crowed. She absolutely, she absolutely boasted about how many people she had watching me. And I mean, it was just, it went on and on and on. It finally settled down. I thought, fuck Australia. I'll never go back there. It's, excuse me. Do you have to take that word out? <laughs> no. I'm so sorry. I mean, I mean, fudge Australia. Um, because they all let it happen. They're all scared to death of this woman for some reason. That would make a great billboard for tourism. Fuck Australia. I'm not going back there. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> well, I mean, really, for one thing, okay, there's a couple of things going on down there. Um, they are more blocked than the USA, if you can believe that. They are more locked down than the United States. I believe that because I still listen to uh, Max Egan's podcast, and Max talks about that a lot. So you know, I'm going to take Max at his word. You know? Yeah, absolutely. They are completely locked down. Oh, she dissed Max Egan, too. She ripped him a new one. Anyway, um, she hates everybody except herself, apparently. Yeah, so a lot of time went by, and then I realized I started seeing this other guy. I can't remember what his name is now, but I will. Anyway, this other uh, chemtrails activist who had gone down there and she decided she didn't like him. And so he was her target as of this point. So I think that we're actually forming a group now of activists who've been destroyed by this woman in Australia. But the problem, Mike, is people don't get it. They aren't snapping to what's going on. Well, you know? let me ask this question. This might be a stupid question, but mm -hmm. the people that she's going to be the Pied Piper for yeah. are people that you're really not going to want around you anyway. So, Pretty much. So basically, yeah. it sounds like she's got her audience and she's got the people that, you know, she can lead around mm -hmm. and create some noise and issues. But at the end of the day, Kara. Yeah, I know. 
You know what I'm saying? I know. I know. It's last year I had made a commitment. For some reason, I got this really, you know, this kind of uh, intuition that where I wanted to try to hit were three countries where it's impossible to get in. Australia, Japan, and India. Three huge, huge markets that are really, really tough to bust into for chemtrails and that kind of stuff, you know. And so I started with Australia because they speak English there, right? Yeah. So, but the thing that made me the, I mean, I'm not mad anymore because it's just ludicrous, but it ruined about six years worth of effort on my part to get into Australia. And the people are stupid enough to buy it. The other thing that's going on down there is, you know, how I always talk about, the one or two or three little groups of chemtrail activists that sort of formed right away and became this in this, this, this good old boys club. And, you know, you don't get in. They're the ones that kind of have the information and they, you, they, they, they're the, always the same names on the convention sites. And, yep. you know, it's the club. It's the club that I've never been able to bust into. Well, they're sort of still at the point where they're only the club is coming in. You know what I mean? So. Yeah. Anyway, it's an interesting thing. Most of the chemtrail geoengineering, I'm going to give you my personal view, yeah. is controlled opposition. You bet your ass it is, Mike. It's controlled opposition. There's very few people that, in my view, that are actually swinging at the plate yep. and really digging in. The others are controlled opposition. They They're trying are. to steer you down a certain path so you don't yeah. look where you're supposed to look. Some of them came into this gig with they already had a lot of money. They're very pretty. They make a, you know, a kind of a, a superhero, you know, visual in front of the well, slick presentation, slick yeah. presentation. And they're still they're still going gangbusters and they are controlled opposition gang. They are. You're just you're just buying into the slick Hollywood bullshit, which a lot of us have been talking about lately too. people like myself who are trying to find two nickels to rub together and working really hard to do it. And then there are the people who are just part of a slick machine, man. They're just part of a slick machine. Yeah. Folks in the truth movement have to, and the alternative research community, they have to come to grips with the fact that controlled opposition is everywhere. Mm -hmm. It's everywhere. Mm -hmm. And there are, of course, there are genuine people that are yeah. doing the work, but it becomes very difficult, especially when you first get into the research, as an example, to discern who's genuine and who's not. Yep. By the time you have figured out who is not genuine, typically you've spent an enormous amount of time spinning your wheels <laughs> with that person's work, as an mm -hmm. example, right? Mm -hmm. so in other words, what it does is it slows your progress. Yeah. It can't necessarily stop you if you really, if you really persevere. Right. But it can sure slow you down. It's like going down a street. You know, the speed limit is 60 miles an hour, but there's a lot of speed bumps. So you can't do 60 miles an hour. That's exactly what it is. And yeah. that's what these people are there to do. Mm -hmm. So you have to be really careful, folks. You really yeah. do. If we really are doing the work, you're opening door after door after door after door after door. If you're just propagandizing, then you're standing on one spot, spinning and screaming into the wind about chemtrails. You know, chemtrails is just a small part of what's going on. It's a it, it's a dangerous part. It's a deadly part. And it's something that we all need to know about. But it it's only part of I mean, I call it reverse engineering the trance because um, the we are enveloped in a complete trance. And it is so, so, uh, forgive me, but hypnotic. It is so, so well crafted. Let me put it that way. And we are so saturated in it that we cannot look at the whole thing and see it. We have to break off pieces, which is what I've been trying to do over the last year is break pieces off. Look at these pieces, reverse engineer, you know, this is how you expose the lie one piece at a time. And so, of course, one thing is going to lead you to the next. Otherwise, you're not using your mind. You're not using your observation. Let me just say quickly what uh, the new edition of Dangerous is out. I've retired the old edition, which means it's showing up for enormous prices, various places. If anybody really wants to go to buy an old copy of Dangerous, <laughs> buy the new copy. It's much, you know, it's much fleshier. Um, I have oh, it's included. Newer and cheaper. <laughs> yes, I much include. I have included Harold Kautzbella's part for the most part. Of course, I would, but it's. Um, it's really just a reference for me now because, as you remember, 
he put it out in the public domain to, as part of his attempt to sabotage that book when he was having his tantrum because I wouldn't add the chapter on how evil had won. You were part of that. You, you were there. I know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm going to take it off the market and add that chapter. Yeah. Anyway, um, so it's in there, minus some of the parts that – see, I had never actually really read his part closely because I completely trusted him. And some of it he just flat out lifted from me. So I removed those parts <laughs> and left the parts that were genuinely his, and it's in there. So um, you're not missing too much. You know, if you think you want to make sure that you have Harold's uh, contribution, certainly it's in there. Anyway, I have added a huge chapter on the psychiatric industry as part of social engineering. That had to happen, started with the Inquisition. It goes along with Freudo Marxism, which is the Frankfurt School and all of that. But a lot of, uh, a lot of the techniques that, um, uh, formed the foundation of this pseudoscience of psychiatry came from the Inquisition. You know, we have to go back all that way. I have also rewritten it with the false chronology in mind as far as much as I can. I mean, you have to be able to say some things about some things, you know, but one of the, one of the, um, walls that you hit when you realize just how much false chronology is out there is it becomes impossible to say anything about anything because because we all use history for a reference don't we right right so you have to say things like if the character of plato ever existed <laughs> he would have said do yeah, you know you what i mean qualify it. yeah yeah well that's the thing you know people have asked me about that too about the false chronology or history being altered or fabricated and i said look they fabricate everything. <laughs> yeah, why is this a surprise to you? Yeah. I mean, I I mean, I don't know. Maybe yeah. those events happened, but yep. on the other hand, maybe those things didn't happen. Or maybe they happened in a different time, in a different way, for a different reason. Exactly. So, you know, and the thing is, you weren't there, so you don't know. And for <laughs> you to know, you have to rely on somebody else telling you that yeah. this happened. And they're going to say, well, that person researched it. Right. But. What did they research and who put the research papers out yeah. there? Who put the, the information out there that the research is based upon? So you can keep backing into it and you always wind up at the end of the day that it's very possible that controlling entities, mm -hmm. they put stuff out there. I mean, yeah, just, yeah, yeah, absolutely. Right. This is what you're going to use. This is what you're going to research <laughs> here. Here's your evidence. Here's your facts here. Here's your history. You know, and nobody's going to know. I mean, who no. the hell knows what, you know, they did 500 years ago or a thousand years ago. Exactly. Exactly. I can speculate. You can speculate. Even if you're talking science, you're speculating unless you were there and or you know enough about the math to verify the data. Well, they alter history now, Karen. Yeah, of they, course they, they alter, do. They alter our history now. Of course. So if you go back to World War II, you go back to Vietnam, you go back to wherever you want to go back within the last 100, 150 years or so. The story yeah. that you're given as to about the Civil War, as an example, well, mm -hmm. the story you're given is a total lie. It is completely. Right. Completely. People believe it. People believe it. I know. So, but th that's my point, folks, yeah. is that, you know, we don't have to go back 500 years or a thousand years. We could just go back 10 years. 10 minutes. 50 <laughs> years. 10, 10 minutes. <laughs> they write the history. It's like what Winston Churchill said, the victors. Write the history. Yes, uh, they do say that. And what I say, I change that a little bit. I say the people who want to have seemed to be victorious write the history. Yeah. So, you know. That doesn't mean it's true, by no, the way. No, it means right? nothing. And I have a, I, I have a whole section in the book as well on the Vatican. I'm oh, one of my good. favorites. Oh my God. Oh my God. That's and a that goes, place. yeah, that goes all the way back to, but see, that links up to this other book I wrote with Maria Wheatley. Guardians of Blood and Fire, The Search for the Celtic Heart. I did that book because I came across in the last year or year and a half research out of Germany, thanks to my husband who translates everything the Germans do. And by the way, the Germans are doing really good work, so I feel very fortunate to have access to that, okay? They are. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You guys have no idea. Them and the Russians. Is and the Russians. Stuff coming out of Russia. Yeah, yeah. you bet. Yep. From Victor, um, Anatoly Fomenko with his chronology. Oh, get with it, guys, because it's, this is where it's coming from. So I got hooked up with a fellow in Germany who had done a tremendous amount of research. He's an He did a lot of etymological research. This guy was kind of a John Nash character. Yeah. Um, he saw patterns everywhere, patterns in everything. And um, 
And if you speak German, you can see him on uh, YouTube. His name is um, Erhard Landmann, L-A-N-D-M-A-N-N, I think. His lectures are dry as paste because he's an IT guy. But if you wanted to and you speak German, you can find his lectures. He's in his mid-80s now. He's not well. He's very unwell. Um, I think my husband is one of the few people he will actually even talk to because Yashka is doing alternative medicine and stuff. So anyway, he came up with the most amazing foundation of etymological evidence that our seed race was called the Fae. I spell it F-A-E because I think that's a beautiful spelling. But you could spell it P-H-E or you could spell it F-E-Y if you were talking about the negative aspects of the Fae. Anyway, I did a ton of research that led me back to Ireland. That's I'm not the first researcher by any stretch who's been led back to Ireland as the seed of our, our civilization. But I believe that... Um, that I have done a fairly good uh, job of presenting a case for a global, tremendously advanced civilization that was with us up until a couple hundred years ago. Um, and I, I dearly enjoyed writing that book. Now, that's what puts me at odds with the Vatican, as you can imagine, because those spiritual beings, this mighty, uh, noble race from whom we are descended, we are those people was not vanquished, if you want to use the term vanquished, was was run down, in a way, by the Catholic Church. It was when the popes decided to hijack this planet, and by the way, they did hijack this planet, that they came face-to-face with the global, you know, the, I want to say Druids, but it's more than that. It's way more than that. It's almost like the Druids were a, a, a watered-down version of the Fae. These are people who did not need to, who only needed to use sound to create, right? I will say that, and I will say till the day I die, this is my job from now on, Mike, is the human imagination. The human imagination is the translator between the morphogenic field, which is pure potential, and the material plane. That is who we are. That is who you are. That is who I am. That is who everybody is who's listening, who's human, Maybe some people listening to your, your show who are not human. Um, this is this is who we are. This is our legacy. And for uh, the several hundred years, there has been a mighty attempt to sever us from the memory of who we are and our abilities. They're still there. Okay, they're still there. We can still use them. Yeah, but we need to get back in touch with them, which is one of the reasons I'm doing this workshop because there is there is a material meditation at a a, a very Serious material med- meditation that Rudolf Steiner gave us at the beginning of the 20th century that will, once you have crafted it for yourself, give you five minutes a day where you can regain control of your own thoughts. And I'll tell you what, five minutes a day is all it takes to make every entity out there or inside so bored with trying to get your attention that they just go away. Now, listen, that's worth a shot to me. This is worth a shot in out in the world to teach people how to do this. Okay. So that's one of the things that I'm doing right now. But the Fay book, I say that we're, in, we, there really is only one battle, Mike, and we're still in it. It began millennia upon millennia upon millennia ago. And it's, it's just been this searing arc through the millennia. One battle and we are still in it. And I actually, like to refer to it as the good fairy or the bad fairies chasing the good fairies because people call the fae the fairies, which is, you know, just another obfuscation. Um, it is a sacred masculine, sacred feminine centric, uh, culture. It is the explanation for why you can go to Peru and find the same damn hieroglyphs that you find in Egypt or the Ukraine or Finland or anywhere. Because there used to be a global civilization, extraordinarily advanced global civilization. The only differences were environmental. What you had to live with where you lived. You know, was your, was it a hot climate? Was it a cold climate? It's not that far behind us and we've been completely severed from it. So I find these things plus the work that is going on in, you know, the stuff that we're still bringing in books like Dangerous Imagination to be Absolutely critical. Absolutely critical. And I'm also reading right now, and it could be true, it could be just fear porn, I don't know, but it seems to me likely that 2018 we're going to roll out some chemtrailing that is very much watershed, I guess you could say. 
It's because it's been given the green light from the government, the U.S. government, that in 2018 they will be, they will then start shrouding the planet. Yeah, that's the Harvard program, the initiative that、um, they announced, I guess, about a month ago or so. Yeah, so this is one of the things that I do. The lecture that I'm doing right now is the reversing, reverse engineering the trans lecture, and、um, I do try, I do show, demonstrate how. This idea of chemtrailing has been normalized, completely normalized in the last few years, and how they're getting ready to roll it out in a way that is really、um, make or break for humanity. Which is one of the reasons I'm just as happy to walk away from my job. I think it requires us to have control of our own thinking to combat this. Okay, now I can do what I can do. You can do what you can do. We can all do what we can do for each other, but we are not. In control of our own thoughts, I'm just going to say that we do not control our own thoughts at all. Well, even when you think that you do, yes, you have to question whether you really do. Yeah, you don't. You really have to work hard on cleaning that up. You can do it in five minutes a day, or you know, I'm not saying that I have some sort of market covered, you know, cornered on how to do that. I just think I have a way that works because I think that. What's going to happen in 2018 could be very, very bad for humanity. Worse than worse than what we've come across so far. I think that、um, we're really in a critical time. You know, but I suppose every year you could say we're in a critical time. It's just that if the government's going to officially sanction chemtrails now and just Katy bar the door, drown them. Yeah, it's not a secret anymore. No, they're just going to go out and do it. Yeah, they're going to say that it's under the guise of helping humanity and、mm-hmm. saving the world and. Right, all of that nonsense, you know.、Um, but there's no doubt that if this was something good, they would not be shoving it under the covers or sweeping it under the under the rug, right? I always said that if it's if it was good, and、uh, there were really positive reasons as to why they were spraying, they、mm-hmm. would come out and tell you, right? And it would make sense. It would make sense.、Right? It would make sense, right? Well, and this is another thing that、um, I've decided to do as of last year when I went to San Francisco to speak. I Decided that I was no longer going to talk about just like Sophia. I'm no longer going to talk about the laundry list of crap that they're dumping on us. You know, that's just it's time occupying. Plus, there's lots of source information out there. If you're really curious, you can、yeah. go find it. Right. So what I talk about is that why is it that we're not out in the streets marching? That's what I want to talk about. That is what I think is important right now. And what I say to people is, listen. I could put two or three of the biggest and most well-known substances that they drop on us in a paper sack, and I could reach my hand in there and I could draw one of them out. It wouldn't matter which one. It would be something that should cause you to be rioting in the streets, and yet you are not. And that is what we have to talk about. You're not going to get that carry, in my view, because there's too much lethargy out there. The human race has been artificially intelligenced. That is through. The media. It's through frequencies. It's through、uh, your food. It's through your water. It's、mm-hmm. through your air. So what's happened is, the human mind, for the vast majority of the people that are walking around, is in a state of functioning. Period.、Mm-hmm. Which means you go to work every day. You do your job. You come home. You drink your beer. You watch your stupid reality TV shows or your stupid football games. Right. And you get up the next morning with a hangover. You go back to work. That's where most of humanity is at these days, especially、right. in the Western world, the Western cultures. Other, other parts of the of the world geographically, I mean, they're in abject poverty. So when you're in abject poverty, what happens is you are not critically thinking; you're just trying to survive. So you know, you're just trying to figure out how I'm going to get a meal for the day. So in this country,、uh, we're in deep, deep trouble because people don't care, Kara. They don't、I、care,、know. and. I know it's a chemical lobotomy. Yeah, we we are not going to get people up out of their chairs because as long as they believe that they can play with their phone, that they can watch TV, they can get in their car, they can drive to Walmart and go do things that in their minds has them thinking that they're free. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I know this stuff doesn't mean anything. People are not even looking up at the sky, Kara. I know. Even now, even now, they're not looking up. Now looking、right. at they're looking at their phones, they're looking、mm-hmm. down, they're looking、mm-hmm. at their feet. You talk to people about GMOs.、Mm-hmm. I have people all the time, you know, come to me and they say, "Well, you know, I have a lot of lethargy. I, I feel like I have cloudy mind.、Um, I have pain, you know, my joints and so on."、Mm-hmm. And we're talking about people that aren't old. 
Right. So of you course. try to have a discussion with them about your diet, about what it is that you're eating and what you're taking into your body. They, they shut down. I know. I know. They just don't want to believe, they refuse to believe that the Stouffer's microwave dinner that they bought in the supermarket mm -hmm. could be bad for them. Mm -hmm. I know. And, or that anybody would create or that so, no, excuse me, almost everyone that comes in the food industry that comes in contact with them would not, ha would have not have their best interests at heart. Exactly. In fact, they don't want to believe that at all. Next episode of the workbook, which is something that I've been kind of working with on the side, is going to be about the food con, um, because it's also really important. It's another chunk of that, of that, um, trance that I want to reverse engineer. So, but Michael, so, so having said all of those very true things, the question then becomes, what do we do about it? My view, what I think now is that they're just, we, because of who we really are, because of how mighty we really are. If we can just get in touch, the, the, the thing that I'm teaching lets you touch the morphogenic field again. Okay. My God. So if just enough of a percentage of us can break free an, an enough, then that, that may be our, our biggest chance, you know? I have actually closed in on a different approach these days and actually have had it for a while now, but. I believe that the lesson here is metaphysical and spiritual in nature and that this realm that we reside in is a school with a curriculum and the biggest lesson that you learn from being in this realm that we call earth is what it is like to be detached from the creator, from source, from God. What mm -hmm. is it like to be in a godless environment, right. a godless realm or dimension, whatever you want to call it, okay? Mm -hmm. And I, I believe that there are those that have come that are here to awaken as many souls as they possibly can so that they can develop spiritually. And the benefits to that awakening, some of it may manifest here in the physical, but I believe most of it's going to manifest when we go back home. That's just a, a theory that I have, because I have spent a lot of time, Kara, trying to figure out how in God's name are we going to get enough people to formulate a critical mass yeah. in order to turn the ship around. Right. And, you know, you're doing great work. I think I'm doing pretty good work. There's so mm -hmm. many other people out there that are doing great, great work. Mm -hmm. And they're so dedicated to this. But then as soon as we step outside of our network or circle, and you go out into the general public and you're talking to Joe Q public or Jane Q public, you have a very stark realization, which is these people are hopeless. Yeah, you kind of feel that way. Like me walking through Logan the other night. Yeah. And I'm not trying to folks like be a rain cloud. Okay. <laughs> what I'm saying is because people are saying, well, Mike, then, you know, what's what's the purpose? Well, the purpose is it is a spiritual enrichment. It's metaphysical yeah. by its very nature to the degree that. You figure out that this is a big deception. There's lies, there's deceit and all that. That's the degree in which your soul becomes enlightened and illuminates. And then when you leave this world, the next time you incarnate, other opportunities and doors will be available to your soul for other ways to explore and to develop. Mm -hmm. Okay? To the degree that you stay bolt it to your chair and right. believe what goes on here, guess what? You're going to keep coming back. You're going to keep cycling through this realm until you finally get it. Right. And if you don't get it, then you're going to spend many, many, many lifetimes going through this place. Yeah, yeah. In other words, you're never going to get promoted to the next grade. That's a theory that I have because mm -hmm. quite honestly, well, what is the end game? What is the end result? Right. All of this stuff. But anyway, I, I talked enough. So you. No, no, that's, that's, um, good stuff. And, and, and you're right that, but it, it, people like yourself and, and all of the uh, wonder, other wonderful people out there who've been working very, very hard for many, many years to try to help the situation can be very difficult to not despair sometimes and to wonder what the hell are we doing? How are we ever going to make a difference here? And so, yeah, that's that's certainly um, the metaphysical aspects, which are always there, are one of the things that that can make it clear 
that what you're doing is not for nothing. Right. And you're not doing it necessarily for you. You're doing it so that you can get other souls to wake up. You know, that's the thing, Mike, across the board. That's what I find with people like yourself and myself and, and other people is that none of us are doing it for ourselves. We're not. And that's kind of a prerequisite of, of getting in it and staying in it is that we're really not. There's nothing in it for us, man. There's nothing in it for us. I prefer not to do it, Kara. If, if right. I could tomorrow not do this anymore yeah. because things got straightened out and yeah. I can spend this time with my family yeah. and my friends or yeah, and enjoying life a little bit more, well, guess what? Yeah. That's what I would prefer to be doing. People used to ask me that sometimes about the sun thief. Would you, you know, do you have any? I was in Germany one time and they asked me, do you have any regrets in a... In a in an interview and I said, well, uh, I'd like for my mom to be alive. I'd rather be hanging out on a beach. I mean, yep. what are you asking me here? This is what it is, you know? So I want to make sure that people know that I have the GoFundMe going on. Okay. Because I am getting ready to have no job. So do me a favor. And, um, also the book's out. So please have at it. I'm going to send Michael the PDF so he can make some comments on it. And I guess, yeah, I've got the lectures and stuff coming up and the Facebook page and the author's page. I am very, very um, conversational. But like Mike, I am somebody who if I'm up at five o'clock in the morning getting ready to go to work and you want to chit chat, I might not be able to. It doesn't mean I'm a heinous. You know what? It means I have a life, too. Yep. And um, I got to get on with it. Um, I have a channel now. It's called Hard True. And it's mostly, I mean, I'm trying to get people, I'm going to get Mike on there one of these days. I'm calling all the, all the people that, um, I interview with and I'm forcing them to come to my channel <laughs> and talk to me oh, on my okay. channel. I know. <laughs> it's like, nah, you got to do the reverse, reverse it for me. Um, I tried to get Sophia too, but, uh, I just had an email exchange with her and I said, but you got to come on Zoom because my Skype doesn't work. And she's like, what? Your Skype doesn't work. I mean, that was that completely totaled the whole thing, man. It's like I I can't that do that. That was like that. a perfect impersonation of her. I know. <laughs> I can't do that. Why doesn't your Skype work? <laughs> oh, man. it's so funny. I'll get her though. I'll get her because she's really cool. She's one of the one of the few people who actually, you know, just said give me a call, and I did. That was a long time yeah. ago. You yeah. know, she's a good person. Yeah, she is. Yeah. But, you know, um, I am going to get back. Um, I'm going to send my husband Mike's way soon enough because he and I are doing this thing called micropressure, which is biopulsing, which is something that um, it's a really interesting thing, Mike. You're going to you're going to be interested in it because coming out of Austria, Yashka and I are now certified in it. And um, what it is, is uh, your body. If you think of your body as uh, electrical circuits, which is not un well, it's what it is. I mean, that's really what it is. Yeah. And you think, and you think that your body takes in any kind of assault, whether it's chemtrails, whether it's, um, whether it's uh, an emotional assault, whether it's, you know, anything, physical assault, sickness, any of that. This, the guy who invented this was an electrical engineer and he said, look, either all the circuits are on or all the circuits are off. You get overloaded, the whole thing, the switch, the switch flips. You know, and so he located some spots on the body where you can actually turn these things back on. Now, the the most interesting thing about this, though, is that the workshops are meant to teach people to do it to themselves. OK. How do you like that? And each other. So that's sovereign. Yeah. That's the sovereign part. Right. And like I said, Kara, we have to understand more about how to do those things. Mm -hmm. How to yourself. keep our mind body dynamic mm -hmm. healthy. Because the so-called medicine that's out there today, right? that's not there to keep you healthy. No, absolutely not. They don't want you healthy. No, they don't want you healthy. It's just because it happens to be um, on my mind right now. I was just in Maine visiting my children, and my youngest son's best friend died while I was there. They'd been best friends since they were eight years old. And he had survived five open-heart surgeries and had had a heart transplant when he was eight. And had spent the last year or so telling his doctors something was wrong. And they had run some tests, I suppose, as they would, and seen him and told him it wasn't his heart. And so on the 30th, on Memorial Day, he died of a massive heart attack. 20 years old, my doctors. 
many, many doctors are really good people and their intent and their heart is in the right place. Mm -hmm. The problem is, is that they are experts only in what they are allowed to know. So in other words, if you are taught that this is the very best of the very best as far as procedures and technology and everything else, mm -hmm. then you're going to believe it's the very best. Yeah, I know. So they don't know what they don't know. In other words, they don't know what it is that has been taken off the table. Right. They're never going to be taught. That is the thing. There's the whole, you know, I'm constantly living with, you know, I live with a medical professional who's talking all, all the alternative stuff about germ theory and bacteria theory. I had a couple hours worth of that this morning, how it's wrong and why it's wrong and in what ways it went wrong and, you know, where the actual lies occurred and all that stuff. But, uh, you know, the doctors and I'm thinking about, uh, the the young people I know who are trying to get into medical school or working as nurses or all of those sorts of things and how they are good people and they just have absolutely no idea what they're doing, what it is that they're perpetrating, you know, against humanity. Right. That's the thing. They they don't know. They they believe they're doing good. I You know, I don't think anybody goes into the medical profession or very few people and say, well, I'm just doing this, you know, because... Uh, I want to make a ton of money. I mean, yes, there's a lot of money for, for many of them once they get going and have established practices, but many are going in there because they want to help people. Mm -hmm. And we can't, I mean, that's another thing. How do we break that code? That's the other thing. Exactly. That's the other thing. How do thing. you break that code? How do you, how do you have conversations with doctors? Because first of all, doctors are taught and indoctrinated that they shouldn't be questioned. Listen, my grandmother was an RN and she used to have to stand up when the doctor came into the room, you know? That was how, that was how they were, they were treated. That was how they were trained to treat doctors. Yeah. Yeah. Well, one of the reasons, one of the ways we do it is we start learning to care for ourselves. Yep. One of the things, reasons I'm so interested in this new sort of thing that's coming out of Austria, it's about teaching groups of people to care for each other or for you to care for yourself in this way that really gets you back in contact with your own body and how your body is working and what really it, what really it is. Um, that's preventing your body from being healthy. What actually is that? Th these are the things that, um, you know, it's, that's the grassroots stuff that, that we want to be part of spreading. And I'll be bringing that to the USA, leading workshops in the USA eventually. I'll see if I can get down your way because you'd be interested in it. Yeah. 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 Hey, one quick story, um, related to the medical business is my dentist. Every time I go to my dentist, good guy. Yeah. He's a really nice guy. Yeah. But I say to him, no fluoride. Yeah. And he looks at me. I know, right? And he's like, what? No, flu no fluoride. <laughs> I had a huge conversation. I had a lengthy conversation with his uh, dental assistant. Yeah. And she said to me, well, Mr. Williams, how come you don't want fluoride? Is it something you're allergic to? Or is it everybody should be allergic to fluoride? Everybody's <laughs> allergic to fluoride. Said, it's a neurotoxin. And then I said, look, about two years ago, finally came out. Mm -hmm. Fluoride is a neurotoxin. Right. The thing is, it went absolutely nowhere. Yeah. Only people that know about it are people like you and me. Yeah, I know. My point being is it's one of Harvard's medical journals. Right. The Lancet. And the dentist doesn't know anything about it. I know. I know. I don't know anything I, about it. I know. I know. I, I know. I had to train my children to say no fluoride. And we, when we went through that for... We went through that for a while. <laughs> Mom, I said no fluoride, and she just looked at me. Yeah, well, okay, but you guys are trained. No fluoride. First thing you say when you sit down in the chair, no fluoride, please. No fluoride. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah I Then know. he gets pissed off because I never have any cavities, you see. So he's like, <laughs> how, how is it he's not taking fluoride and has no cavities? <laughs> right, right. I know. Well, we just got to keep moving along, I suppose. Yeah. Um, do you know Mark Devlin's work? Oh yeah, Mark and I are good friends. Uh, yeah, Mark is one of my new good friends too. He's another clean guy. He's absolutely clean, that guy. Mark is a great guy. He's a good guy. We did, uh, we did two shows on, on the music industry. Specifically, we talked about the whole Paul is Dead conspiracy. Because right. That, that's all about Tavistock. Right. Stuff. So people hear Paul is Dead and they're like, oh yeah, that guy's crazy. But the thing is, you have to understand that it's absolutely a Tavistock program. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, maybe we could get the th a three-way with you and Mark. That'd be fantastic, wouldn't it? I'm going to set that up, okay? Yeah, I would love to be on the show with Mark. Like, he's a very good friend of mine. We could talk about the whole music industry. We could talk about the Beatles and McCartney and stuff like that. Yeah, fantastic. Good. All right. So, Kara, thank you so much for coming on the show. Thank you, darling. All I'll right. speak to you soon. I'll talk to you soon. Bye. 
And that concludes another Sage of Quay interview, and I hope you enjoyed the discussion as much as I did. Links to my guests' websites and social media are listed in the show notes below. And as always, I'd like to thank everyone for listening and visiting the blog. You can get to the blog by typing in sageofquayradio.blogspot.com or simply head over to our hub website at sageofquay.com. Also, if you get a moment, please visit laboroflovemusic.com to listen to my album, Leaving Dystopia. And remember, live in truth and always serve creation. It's really that simple. See everyone next week. Be safe, enjoy, and God bless. I'm tired.